So as I watched today's January 6th public hearings, three words kept coming to mind. Trump is toast. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So using a word like blockbuster doesn't really begin to describe what we saw, what we heard, what we learned from today's January 6th public hearings. I want to start and finish this video by talking about the primary witness we heard from. We saw her videotaped testimony. We saw her live testimony today, a 25-year-old young woman named Cassidy Hutchinson. Ms. Hutchinson was a very close aide to former chief of staff to the president, Mark Meadows. And Mark Meadows, as you all know, is missing in action. He's hiding, he's ducking, he's dodging. He refused to testify to the January 6th committee and by extension, refused to tell the American people about Donald Trump's crimes. So 25-year-old Cassidy Hutchinson had to step into that sort of constitutional void left by the cowardly little, I don't want to use the word man because he doesn't deserve that title, male, the cowardly little male that Mark Meadows is. Mark Meadows, who would rather commit the crime of contempt of Congress than have to snitch on Donald Trump, than have to tell Congress and the American people about the crimes, the dangerous crimes, the deadly crimes of Donald Trump. And in the process, Mark Meadows is covering up his own crimes, and we'll talk about that at the end of this video. But I want to start, and I'm going to finish on the test of testimony of a very brave young woman, 25-year-old Cassidy Hutchinson. What did we learn from today's hearing? I'm just going to try to hit some of the highlights, and I'm going to try to explain how I would use this evidence if I were prosecuting Donald Trump and Mark Meadows in court to 12 citizens sitting in the jury box as the conscience of the community, 12 citizens who ultimately will have Donald Trump's fate in their hands, and they will be asked to evaluate the evidence and decide if Donald Trump committed crimes, if the evidence proves Donald Trump committed crimes, proves it beyond a reasonable doubt, and it will. So what is some of what we learned? We learned that before the attack on January 6th, before Donald Trump even said word one during his speech on the ellipse by which he riled up his supporters, he incited them, he enraged them. Before he even went out to begin giving that speech, he was briefed on the fact that the crowd was armed, armed with assault rifles, armed with handguns, armed with knives, armed with sharpened flagpoles, armed to the teeth. And in response to that, what did Donald Trump say? Take down the metal detectors. I think they're called magnetometers, if I've got that right. Mags, for short. Take down the effing mags. This is what Trump said. Because they may be armed, but they're not here to hurt me. I want to pause on that because that is the centerpiece of the incriminating evidence we heard today, friends. He was briefed that they were armed. He told his security staff, take down the metal detectors, let them in, because they're not here to hurt me. Jurors will hear those words during the course of the criminal trial of Donald Trump. And when jurors hear testimony, they obviously can draw conclusions based on the very words uttered by the defendant, but they're also permitted 
as the judge instructs them to draw inferences from those words. What do those words mean? What do they convey beyond the fact that Donald Trump was confident that the armed mob wasn't there to hurt him? By inference, by implication, he knew they were there to hurt the people up the street in the Capitol who were certifying the win of his opponent, Joe Biden. And he wanted them armed. And as we're going to talk about in a minute, what we learned today from the public hearing, he wanted to lead them. He wanted to lead the attack. He wanted to lead the armed insurrection to stop the certification of Joe Biden's win. That's what the jurors would be allowed to infer based on what we learned today. Donald Trump said, take down the effing mags because they may be armed, but they're not here to hurt me. And then, of course, he gave that speech. He enraged and incited the armed mob to violence and told them, now we are going to march on the Capitol and I'm going to be there with you, leading the charge. And we saw video of him getting into the presidential limo, which they call the Beast, because it's so heavily fortified, and off he drove. And a Secret Service agent named Steve Engel was driving, and there was another, I believe, Secret Service agent, uh, uh, Tony Honorato, in the car. And this is what we learned happened after Donald Trump was done inciting the angry mob and telling them to go to the Capitol, fight like hell or you won't have a country anymore, stop the certification, stop the steal, and I'm going to be there with you. Obviously, if he tells this angry mob he will be there, it will encourage them to go with him, not just for him, but with him. He's going to be there with us. We've got our assault rifles. We've got our Glocks. AR-15s, that was the testimony, knives, bear spray, brass knuckles, sharpened flagpoles, body armor, combat helmets, and he's coming with us. He told us, even though everybody had advised him, do not go, Mr. President, do not go. It's not safe. We don't have a plan in place. We can't protect you. And his own White House counsel, Pat Cipollone, said if he goes, we will be charged with every crime imaginable. That was the testimony. Oh, and Donald Trump wanted to go. Not only did he want to go, we heard testimony that after he got in the beast, he directed the driver, Steve Engel, drive me to the Capitol. Steve Engel said, it's not safe, sir. We're going back to the West Wing. Donald Trump said, I'm the effing president. Drive me to the Capitol. Steve Engel said, no, sir. So Donald Trump reached over and grabbed the wheel. And then the testimony was that Steve Engel grabbed the president's arm. And the next thing you know, the president leaps for Steve Engel. And Cassidy Hutchins demonstrated what uh, Tony Honorato told her happened next. The president leaped for the driver, Steve Engel. Well, they took Donald Trump back to the White House, not to the Capitol. But his armed, angry mob were already attacking the Capitol, per his orders. And he wanted them armed. And he wanted them there. And he wanted them fighting like hell. And then we learned about what he wanted done to Mike Pence. Once he got back to the White House, people were, some people were begging and pleading with him to call off the attack, and he wouldn't. Mark Meadows wasn't begging and pleading with him to call off the attack. Mark Meadows was enabling him. In fact, the testimony was that the president was briefed on the fact that his angry armed mob was chanting, hang Mike Pence. And Donald Trump said, Mike Pence deserves to be hanged. And my supporters, the rioters, 
they've got it right. They're doing nothing wrong. And Mark Meadows accepted that and enabled that. So no, Donald Trump wouldn't call off the attack on the Capitol once underway. He knew his angry mob was armed with deadly weapons. In fact, he wanted to lead the attack on the Capitol. He even resorted to assaulting his own driver to try to force him to take him down to the Capitol. We know that he wanted to participate in what he told Mark Meadows and others was the right thing for his supporters to be doing at the Capitol, including what they were trying to do to Mike Pence. He was in support of it all, and he wanted to participate in it. He wanted to lead it. We learned other things during today's hearing. We learned that Mark Meadows requested a pardon. We don't know if he has one. He probably does. But we know that Mark Meadows believed he needed a pardon because he committed crimes. And the only way to get away with those crimes is to be pardoned by his co-conspirator, Donald Trump. What else did we learn? Well, we learned that Donald Trump's team is threatening and intimidating witnesses. Witnesses who are appearing before the January 6th committee. Witnesses who are being called to testify about the crimes of Donald Trump. His team is reaching out to them and saying, Trump will be watching. You better stay loyal. Yeah, that's mob speak, right? They are behaving precisely like the criminal organization they are. And I want to end with this piece because there was testimony from Cassidy Hutchinson that Mark Meadows told her that the day before the attack on the Capitol, on January 5th, he said, I need you to make arrangements for me to go to the war room at the Willard Hotel where, you know, the War Council is posted up, Bannon and Roger Stone and the rest of Donald Trump's lackeys and flunkies and criminal associates are holed up trying to strategize how they can bring an end to our democracy. Mark Meadows told Miss Hutchinson, yeah, I'm going to be going to uh, meet with the War Council at the Willard Hotel. And this 25-year-old young woman said to the chief of staff, to the president of the United States, Mr. Meadows, not a good idea, not a good look, don't do it. And Mark Meadows took her advice, wise advice, sage advice, and said, okay, I won't go. I'll just dial in instead. You know, I don't often throw the term heroic around, but I think Miss Hutchinson's conduct was what we would hope for in a public official. And her testimony, and I'm sure all of the consequences that will come with her testimony, I think can be called heroic. And what I'm not going to do at this point, I'm going to try not to do, is talk about how the Department of Justice really needs to step up and indict Donald Trump for his crimes and indict Mark Meadows for his crimes and indict John Eastman and Roger Stone and Steve Bannon and Mike Flynn and Jeffrey Clark and I'm missing so many others. Indict them for their crimes. I'm not going to talk about that right now, even though I kind of just did because we now know that America needs to be protected against the likes of Donald Trump. And that is the Department of Justice's job to protect we the people, to protect our democracy. When we now know that Donald Trump launched an armed attack on the Capitol because those people 
in the crowd on January 6th with AR-15s and Glock pistols, as was the testimony, weren't here to hurt me. I don't want them disarmed. I want the effing metal detectors taken down and we're all going to march together to the Capitol. And we're going to stop the certification of Joe Biden's win. We're going to stop the peaceful transfer of power. I'll be talking in the future about the need for indictments, the need for arrests, the need for takedowns, the need for accountability. Because justice matters. Friends, please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.